Happy Sabbath, friends. Hi, everyone. How are you? Welcome to this week's lesson. We are on chapter what? Chapter 40. Of the book, The Desire Ages. And the topic is A Night on the Lake. Mm. So, <laughs> that's the picture. Oh, a Night mm -hmm. on the Lake. I think that's Peter drowning. <laughs> we don't need to think. You know, it's Fred, this guy. <laughs> In the characters of the disciples, and if they're going to be 12 gates that are going to be based on our character names, <clears throat> I think Brother Liberty will get into the same gate with, uh, with Peter. <laughs> At least that's his confession. So I'm still trying to figure out who will give, whose gate I'll get him through, but yes. Um, so this is what we are learning about. Before we begin, I'll ask Uncle Nick to give us a word of prayer. Okay, let us pray. Our Father, our team in heaven, I'd like to thank you this afternoon for allowing us to share your word. May you please open our hearts and may you please lead us, speak through us, and everyone who is going to watch this video, may they be drawn closer to you. Pray all this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So, um, it's based on John chapter 6 as well, 14 to 21, and we have this in the other synoptic Gospels. Um, Jesus chased the, not really chased, he instructed the disciples. Yeah. He instructed the disciples to go um, on ahead without him. And so as he instructed them to go, the disciples were initially like, no, you want to stay, yeah. And they're like, eh, 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 guys, move. Mm. He spoke with so much authority and they're like, hmm. So they decided to go. And Jesus had told them, I'll meet you by the head. So they went, and on the way, they were busy memory and they were saying, ah, probably we were not supposed to do that. Why did we end up giving in? Ah, then this guy, why is he waiting for so long to reveal himself as the Messiah? What, what is he waiting for? Everyone just had something to say, something negative to say on that boat in their memory. And so God then said, oh, okay, that's fine. I'll give you something real to murmur about. And so the storm arose. <laughs> and as the storm arose, the sheep was tossing and turning, and these guys are scared. In the middle of the storm, imagine. They then just saw a figure of a person coming forward, and they think, ah, is that a ghost? And now their hearts are pounding. And they're wondering, how are we going to solve this? And they then began to cry and ask for help. And then Jesus came as though he was passing by them, past them. And they then started saying, Lord, save us, save us, save us. And they realized, oh, okay, this is him. And he instructed the, the wind to calm down. So brother Peter here then said, Lord, if it is really you, mm. instruct me to walk on water. <laughs> and guy got out and he was now walking on water. And you know, he was feeling that, yes, 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 I'm doing these things. So he looks at his friends and like, guys, do you see me? I am. <laughs> the moment these thoughts began to come, the wind came and it brought waves and that separated him in Christ and he then just panicked and he's like oh no I'm sinking and then he says save Lord save and Jesus says to him oh ye men of little faith and this is when Christ saved him and he went back to the sheep and he was calm he was very calm and sober and could not post anything of what he had just gone through because of Mm. <laughs> yeah, sometimes God gives us experiences that are out of this world, but we can't boast about them. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, my mom would always say, Chaga kutonu urewa. Yeah. Panega kufarisa. Kufarisa is, I don't know. You know what kids do when they are visitors? Mm. That's kufarisa. Mm. So my mom would like, kufarisa, chaga kutonu urewa. And here, John Rodera is being cold. Mm -hmm. You need to be cold. And so here, Brother Peter was cooled by God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he has come. So that's our lesson for today. Let's get into it. Um, 
So my first quotation says, unbelief was taking possession of their minds and hearts. Mm. Love of honor had blinded them. They knew that Jesus was hated by the Pharisees and they were eager to see him exalted as they thought he should be. Mm. To be united with a teacher who could work miracles and yet to be reviled as deceivers was a trial they could ill endure. Mm. Were they always to be accounted followers of a false prophet? Would Christ never assert his authority as a king? Why did not he who possessed such power reveal himself in his true character and make their way less painful? Why had he not saved John the Baptist from a violent death? Mm. Now the disciples reasoned until they brought upon themselves great spiritual darkness. They questioned, could Jesus be an imposter? As the Pharisees asserted. This is my question to you. Okay, she doesn't want me to point at people. I think that's not a good uh, uh, thing that me and Peter always do. But we'll be trying to, to see if people are getting a point. <laughs> Alright, this is my question to you. Does God really exist? Like, what evidence do you have that God really cares for you when you don't have as much as other people? He hasn't done great things like you... You're not the most powerful, uh, like even the nation that you live in, it's not, it seems like the most prayerful, but not um, prosperous. Your family, you all pray, you all do things for God. That's the same question the disciples had. To say, there's one thing that we are waiting for. Jesus has proved again and again that he is the Messiah, but when is he going to the throne and prove to the Pharisees and all these opposers that he is the real Messiah? You know, we are always waiting in life to say God should prove against those who are saying your God is not powerful, your God doesn't care about you. Mm. And we are always looking for that evidence to say he should show himself against these people. And what does Jesus do? He doesn't do those, all those things. And we'll see like in next week and even, yeah, in next week, that Jesus goes on to say, those who want to go, they can go. If you want to join them, you can join them. So this is something that we should always remember, especially in these last days. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a question that my friends always ask. No, I, I don't have anything against my friends. That they're always saying Jesus is coming again, he's coming again. What new thing is happening? Like, what evidence do you have? What really? And this God, like being asked difficult questions even jesus will learn that he did not answer some of these questions people really know that god is there we are not here by accident a lot of things will show the evidence that there is a god who is really out there but we are always look, looking for this one other reason not to believe in him but if god has given you enough reasons to cling to him cling to him he will not disappoint you Jesus is coming again very soon and um, we should always stick to what God is saying to us. Some of these things are actually, if we are going to make it to heaven, we need to have a personal relationship with God. Some of the things we might not be able to explain them to other people. Yes, our characters and how we live will actually um, <clears throat> prove that we are working with God and yeah the impatience that she have i'll give you an, uh, an opportunity to speak then all right you thank can you can you can say your cut oh thank you <laughs> no i actually think you of the song <clears throat> i need no other evidence i mm. need no other it is enough that Jesus died and rose again. It is enough. Just that. Yes. And so <clears throat> I was thinking about it in light to say, um, actually, there's a quote that we'll read which says that for those who doubt, we really need to step to Christ. We say there will always be enough evidence for those who want to doubt. Mm. And we have it again in the book that is at pages where it's saying that 
there will be enough evidence for that. This just keeps reiterating and arising. And I think it's important in these last days because you have so many issues being raised against the church of God, against the word of God itself. Mm. To say, hey, but this person is this, this person is that. A prophetess of God is this, a prophetess of God is that. My brothers and sisters, let's not give way to doubt. Mm. Let's hold fast to what we have believed in. And always remember that there will always be enough evidence to doubt. But when we commit ourselves humbly to Mm. God, God will reveal to us the things that beset us. There's no problem in saying, God, I don't understand Mm. this. Explain it to me. Mm. But there's a difference between being arrogant towards God and humbling yourself to God. Remember, Jeremiah actually says, God says, and you'll seek me and you shall find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. Mm. God wants to make himself known to us. Let's seek him. And so my next quotation reads that their thoughts were stormy and unreasonable and the Lord gave them something else to afflict their souls and occupy their minds. God often does this when men create burdens and troubles for themselves. The disciples had no need to make trouble. Already danger was fast approaching. Mm. How often we've just made trouble for our... Like to these days... We are making trouble for ourselves in so mm. many things. Yeah. When disaster is approaching. Disaster is approaching, yeah. <laughs> aye, 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 aye. Disaster is approaching. And so God, the only thing that God is going to do is give us something to really worry about. Mm. These issues that we are discussing. Complaining. Uh, we, 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 Why? we should not even be talking about In the about last them. hour. We, we shouldn't be talking about them. And, you know, it's unfortunate, like, probably we'll be talking to people who are not on uh, certain platforms where these discourses have been made, but we know that there are talks on typing, on what God says, on whether or not Ellen White was inspired. These are things we've been told will come in the last days. Mm. And we've allowed our minds to dwell on unimportant things, and yet we are nearing a time of crisis. Mm. A time when we should be coming together, pressing together, and asking God to lead us united. Mm. So let us not get distracted. Let us not get distracted. The work that we have ahead of us is Mm. quite great. Let's ask God to not allow our minds to dwell on, not shallow things, but unimportant Mm. in comparison to the work that we have ahead. Let's pray together, my brothers and sisters. Let's pray for each other. And let's keep our minds stayed on God. Mm. Um, I believe I have the next quotation which reads that day by day, God instructs his children. By the circumstances of the daily life, he is preparing them to act their part upon the wider stage which his providence has appointed them. It is the issue of the daily test that determines their victory or defeat in life's great crisis. Mm. I cannot reiterate how many times this theme has been revealed to us. Remember, when we were reading the great controversy, Wade was saying that it was by daily preparation, where I was sharing during the Reformation, to say Luther prepared the things that he spoke of before the date. Remember, he was in prison for some time. He didn't actually have access to his material. The things that he remembered, the things that he studied daily before he was arrested. And I was hearing that, and then when we studied the Acts of the Apostles, we note that uh, the same experience existed with the people, with Paul in particular, he had to rely on what he had learned. Of course, when he went to Rome as a prisoner, he was a bit free and he had access to materials. But before that, he had to rely on the things he had daily learned. Mm. Now, when we get to the three Hebrew boys, or the four in the other test, these guys had started daily in what they were eating. Mm. They were overcoming daily and then when the time came for them to say, let's kneel down before this, they were, a- they were able to stand. 
I remember sharing that the sun, the law, when it comes, my brothers and sisters, is going to be a fine now revelation of what we've been doing now. Don't wait to say, I will prepare when the Sunday law comes. I will perfect my car. It will be too late. Too late. Christ is calling us now, daily, to surrender. So we can't say we'll keep the Sabbath when the Sunday law comes. When it should be a preparation now of what we should be doing. I hope you get me well. We can't be saying, no, but our family is to feed those families will still be there when the Sunday law comes. Nothing is going to change. Yeah. So God is saying, I need you to develop this relationship with me now mm. for a greater test. Remember when the Sunday law comes, that's it. Mm. The beauty of these daily tests is that today if you fail, you can say tomorrow I'll try again mm. and I'll, I'll give it my best. But as this is happening, it's like a coach who is training a child for a game that the child has. Once the game comes, today the coach can be in it and say, it's okay, let's sleep on it and practice, and tomorrow we'll do better. Better just on this. And there's help that comes. But once the final one comes, that's it. My brothers and sisters, God is calling us to rely on him, to surrender now, to ask God to say, Lord, please help me prepare and work on my weaknesses. Help me to prepare and Plug out the things that might stop me from making it in the final test. Thank you. Thank you, baby. Um, it says here, yeah, those who fail to realize their constant dependence upon God will be overcome by temptation. Mm. We may now suppose that our feet stand secure and that we shall never be moved. We may say with confidence, I know in whom I have believed. Nothing can shake my faith in God and in His word. Mm. But Satan is planning to take advantage of our hereditary and cultivated traits of courage mm. and to blind our eyes to our own necessities and defects. Only through realizing our own weaknesses and looking steadfastly unto Jesus, we can, can we walk securely. Um, we will always see that uh, the more we get closer to Christ, we see how much we need him. Mm. But the moment we feel like, ah, now I know a lot about God, that's when we start maybe arguing, start trying to correct the things of God, trying to scrutinize God himself. So if he works this way, then this should mean this and everything, things like that. And we will cease to see the need to depend upon him. Mm. And we will fall. And what the devil does now is he leaves you like that. But on a critical moment, that's when he will attack. And like Mara was saying, there's a critical moment which is right ahead of us. And most of us, we think we can stand. But when it comes, that's when we will realize that we never knew how to talk to God. Mm. We never knew how to stand with God. We never knew how to rely on God. Mm. And there's, an, a, there's a night that we went through with Mara when we all woke up and say, ah, you know, I didn't know I wasn't ready for this. I wasn't ready for this. But like she said, we are still, we still have time to prepare for what's happening in our lives and what's coming. But when the time comes now, if we had not prepared, if we had not, if we do not know how to call upon the Lord, how to rely upon God in each and every moment, not sometimes to say once every week when I go to church, or oh, when this temptation, this kind of temptation comes, mm. each and every second, the devil is just ready to strike. Mm. You know, um, uh, Mara was telling me how this moment she went out during a divine service. We were actually in divine. The moment that she got out, someone was ready to strike on her. And that's how swift the angels are always there to guard us and everything. And we don't know about these things. Mm. And uh, I was, we had another story of someone who tried to snatch um, uh, a kid from one of my cousin's sisters. Like, just a, a lot of things. We, we, we think we are prepared. And, and how the angels now um, protect us. Those are some of the general things. But when it comes to personal things that um, happen, 
the things that test our character to say, are we able to stand? Are we able to rely on God when our character is tested? Mm -hmm. We will only realize sometimes when it's too late mm -hmm. or in those moments that are deciding for eternity. So may we take each and every moment to really rely on God. Last week we learned, was it last week when we learned about how we should just see even in our meals how God has performed a miracle for us to be eating the bread we, we have uh, in front of us. May God help us and may, may we always uh, remember to stay prayerful and rely upon the Lord. Amen. Thank you, baby. So there's a verse that says, Let he who thinks he stands mm. be careful, lest he fall. Lest he fall. Um, it's Revelation. No. no. There's one in Revelation. <laughs> Uh, the message to the churches. Okay, you remember reading it. Yeah, it's okay. It's repeated. <laughs> so, um, we have to realize our weaknesses, mm -hmm. and realization of those weaknesses is what enables us to be dependent on Christ. Mm. To realize that I can't do it on my own. I can't. Mm. And this is something that Peter sometimes forgot because he thought, ah, I've arrived, I'm there. Mm. And so remember, it said here that this is what Christ wanted to teach him. And if he had understood the test, he would not have felt the time when the cock crowed. Mm. You see? But he didn't get it. He mm. didn't get it. It was only later that he then. And when he became the leader of the church, he had heard what Christ had said. He had mm. understood the lesson. How many times Christ is trying to teach us daily, in the disappointments of our lives, in the moments we feel inadequate, Christ is reminding you. Christ is reminding you. Just this Friday, Christ was reminding me, and I was telling Uncle Lee that Christ is reminding me in this. Mm. We can't do it on our own. My brothers and sisters, let's surrender. And it says that no sooner had Jesus taken his place in the boat than the wind ceased. And immediately the sheep was at the land whither they went. Mm. Allow Jesus to take his seat in the boat of your life. Allow Jesus to take his rightful place. And whatever storms you are facing right now will be calmed by the master of the sea. If this is your prayer today, please bow your head with us as we pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for the message we had today. We ask that you may forgive us of all our sins. We've learned the importance of daily preparation. Help us, Lord, to prepare. It is not easy, and we ask that you may be our strength. Lord, how we ask that you may help us to love you more each and every day, to be faithful to you. We ask that we may surrender and realize our weaknesses and look to Jesus always. Lord, we are so sinful and marred by sin. How we ask that you may have mercy on us as you always have, that we may be able to overcome, that our friends and I may be found amongst those who will be going to heaven. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Have a good week, by God's grace. See you next week. Okay.